You're listening to the Sex Addicts Recovery Podcast, a place for sex addicts to share their experiences of recovery, to help break the stigma, myths, and misconceptions of sex addiction. This podcast may contain topics of sexuality, sexual trauma, dysfunction, or other things that may be triggering. So listener discretion is advised. Hello and welcome to the Sex Addicts Recovery Podcast. My name is Jason, I'm a sex addict, and I will be your podcast host for today. What's going on everybody? Welcome to episode number 16 of the Sex Addicts Recovery Podcast. Today is going to be a shorter episode. Life has been quite crazy recently and I have not had time to schedule a conversation for this week. I've got a lot of really great ideas and topics and guests that will be coming up in the future. I've just not had all the time to coordinate all that to get it together for a conversation this week. A few weeks ago on an episode, I had mentioned the TV show Lost and how I related to things in that show as an addict. And I had also mentioned that I wanted to discuss other TV shows that had to do with recovery. And since episode nine, I have been talking about songs that I relate to in my journey of recovery. And one of the things that I've been thinking about in Tradition 10, we talked about um, outside issues And there was a line in the reading that talked about having our personal opinions. And I wanted to make sure that when I'm talking about songs and music and TV shows that relate to recovery for me, that these are my opinions and um, they are do not necessarily reflect those of SAA as a whole. And further researching this, I wanted to... I wanted to do a reading from the chapter, Our Life in Recovery, the section on outside help. And this is on, and this is on page 73, the first paragraph. And then I'm going to read the last paragraph of the section, which is on page 74. So the first paragraph, SAA offers a program of recovery from sex addiction, Although our experience has shown that the 12 steps lead to a spiritual awakening and provide invaluable guidance for a new way of life, we do not claim that our program provides answers to every problem or situation that we might face. Many of us have felt the need to seek help from outside the fellowship, in addition to the support we receive in our SAA groups. We are encouraged by our friends in recovery to take whatever action necessary to further our well-being and personal growth. And it goes on to talk about um, different types of support groups and therapy, religious organizations, and things like that. In the last paragraph, as we grow in recovery, we discover what we need in order to take care of ourselves and give ourselves permission to meet those needs. Outside resources are available as part of our self-care. We also grow in our willingness and ability to reach out beyond the SAA program, enjoy a greater connection with people, and engage with life. We gain not only freedom from our disease, but the freedom to be at home in the world. It's within these readings and the reading of Tradition 10 that I wanted to express that these are my personal opinions on things in recovery, but I would like to share them with the greater podcast community. So like using AA literature and um, things from Dr. Patrick Carnes, those are things that are considered outside help. They may not be directly SAA, but they do enhance uh, recovery. So one of the TV shows that I had been wanting to talk about is an HBO show called Euphoria. And I know this can be a triggering and troubling uh, series for a lot of people in the program. I wanted to discuss a 
a one-off special episode that aired in uh, December of 2020. For anyone that doesn't know the show, I wanted to read a little bit from uh, the Wikipedia page, a quick summary in this one sentence. It follows a group of high school students through their experiences of sex, drugs, friendships, love, identity, and trauma. And here's another description that I found. Euphoria follows the troubled life of 17-year-old Rue, a drug addict fresh from rehab with no plans to stay clean. Circling in Rue's orbit are Jules, a transgender girl searching for where she belongs, Nate, a jock whose anger issues mask sexual insecurities, Chris, a football star who finds adjustment from high school to college harder than expected, Cassie, whose sexual history continues to dog her, and Kat, a body-conscious teen exploring her sexuality. As the classmates struggle to make sense of their futures, the series tackles the teenage landscape of substance-enhanced parties, anxiety-ridden day-to-day life with empathy and candor. And like many HBO shows, like uh, Game of Thrones and stuff, it does have nudity and can be quite triggering. But the episode that I wanted to talk about is a special one-off episode called Special Episode Part 1, Rue, and it is also known as Trouble Don't Always Last. And you can watch this episode completely independent of seeing the entire series. It's basically a conversation between Rue, who is played by Zendaya, and her sponsor, who is played by Coleman Domingo. And... It is an amazing hour of television that the conversation between sponsor and sponsee at a diner on Christmas Eve is just so amazingly true. I have been on both sides of that conversation as a sponsee and as a sponsor. It's amazing. And I wanted to play some clips from the show there were so many things that I wanted to, to use, but um, I've narrowed it down to a couple of clips. And so the, the, the first part here is right as we meet Rue in the diner with her sponsor, Ali, uh, the first couple minutes of the episode is uh, Rue dealing with her trans girlfriend, Jules. And as soon as Jules leaves, Rue um, does her drug of choice and then goes to meet her sponsor. Uh, Rue is in relapse and basically blaming her relapse on her uh, current relationship with Jules. And although they're talking a lot about drugs and drug addiction, just like we translate things from the AA big book, no matter what what the addiction is, the root of it is still the same. So anyway, here is the first clip I wanted to play. I guess I just like made her the point, but she's like, not the point. I'm the point, you know, (laughs) the point is your sobriety. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And, and like my, my general overall will be, which starts with your sobriety. Yeah. Mm hmm. And like finding an emotional balance, you know? You just said you found an amazing balance. I, I did. I have. I, I mean, I'm not perfect, you know, so I'm, I'm sane, though. I'm sane, saner. I'm making sane decisions. Rue, you're high. <laughs> I feel like you're not listening to what I'm saying. Rue, I don't think you're listening to what you're saying. I feel like that's physically impossible. To what? Talk some bullshit? (laughs) My point is, it's not going to last. Yeah, well, neither do my moods when I'm sober. Okay, well, you know, I'm not saying you're um, a paragon of mental health. You've got your issues, and you're going to be struggling with those issues for the rest of your life. That's a fact. (laughs) The problem is, is that you look at sobriety as a weakness in the face of those issues, and what I'm saying is, sobriety is your greatest weapon. Man, 
sobriety is your greatest weapon. That's such a, a powerful scene. And I love the ability for the the sponsor to see through the bullshit and you know, cut right to it. In this next clip, which is shortly shortly after the first clip, Ali is talking about the disease of addiction. I pulled the audio from the uh, Euphoria YouTube page, and it's broken up into, I think, 12 different parts. The first part has been deleted from YouTube due to um, any uh, nudity in the first part. Part two is right at the diner scene, and the entire uh, rest of the episode is in the diner. I I don't know if I mentioned it before. This was filmed uh, during the pandemic in 2020. A lot of TV shows that first started filming together had a smaller amount of cast on set and uh, socially distant. In, in this episode, instead of cutting to all these different characters, it made for such an emotional and intimate discussion between sponsor and sponsee. Oh, and the reason that I uh, brought up the YouTube factor is uh, this scene here takes place at the end of, I think, part three on YouTube and part four. And part of the conversation got cut off. And so I found an audio source that I spliced in just to keep the continuity of the sentence. The The sound quality is a, a little bit tweaked, but it is a, a powerful uh, message from Ali. You didn't come out of the womb, an evil person. You, Rue, came out of the womb, a beautiful baby girl, who unbeknownst to her had a couple of wires crossed. So when you try drugs for the first time, it uh, sets something off your brain that's beyond your control. And it isn't a question of willpower. It's not about how strong you are. You've been fighting a losing game since the first day you got high. So you can destroy your life. You can fuck your little sister's head up. You can abuse and torture and take for granted your mama and sit here and look me in the eye and say as calm as can be, as cool as a cucumber, I'm going to keep using drugs. Huh. That is the disease of addiction. It is a degenerative disease. It is incurable. It is deadly. And it's no different than cancer. And you got it. Why? Mm. Look at the draw. But but the hardest part of having the disease of addiction, aside from having the disease, is that no one in the world sees it as a disease. They see you as selfish. They see you as weak. They see you as cruel. They see you as uh, destructive. They think, why should I give a fuck about her if she doesn't give a fuck about herself or anybody else? Why does this girl deserve my time, my patience, my sympathy, right? If she wants to kill herself, let her. All reasonable questions and responses. But luckily, you aren't the only person on planet Earth who has this disease. There happens to be people like me who understand that you aren't all that bad. (laughs) Probably underneath all this busted ass chaotic energy, you might even be a good kid, who knows? And that is why we're eating pancakes on Christmas Eve, despite the fact that you don't want to get clean. Both Zendaya and Coleman Domingo are amazing in this episode. Um, Some of their discussions that they have throughout the episode cover Rue not sure about step two, and they have this amazing discussion about the need for creating a power greater than oneself. Uh, There's also some great discussions on social topics that were current to 2020 Black Lives Matter is uh, one of them. Also a fantastic discussion on um, trying to date uh, in early sobriety and putting recovery first. Uh, towards the end of the episode where it just gets deep and emotional, Rue is talking about her being unforgivable because she attempted to kill her mother with a piece of glass and leads to this conversation. And it's almost like a a fifth step 
pointing out flaws and the darkest part of oneself, but the sponsor being able to push to dig, there's the line, dig deeper or look deeper and trying to get beyond the superficial. And this is one of the things that I love about a sponsor sponsee relationship, trying to work the steps by yourself. You don't get the, the same depth as working it with someone else who's already worked the steps and knows where to push when someone is not really cutting to the, the heart of the matter. This scene is just amazing. It goes on for longer than, than what I've posted here. Uh, I wish I could just let it play out, but um, I just, I, I wanted to be able to convey this in the podcast. And I know for myself that I relate a lot to it from both sides. I have a lot of the same negative self-talk calling myself a piece of shit. And just non-deserving of things. And so, please give this scene a listen. Every time you do something unforgivable, you think, why change? I'm just a piece of shit. I better keep going. What's the difference now? Without realizing that forgiveness is the key to change. We're too busy running around judging everybody's intentions and motivations as if we have some insight into the human soul. You know, you did this, so that must mean you're that. Just give me a break. Ali, I picked up a piece of glass. I pointed it at my mom. And I told her I was going to kill her. Right? That's fucking terrible. But what's it mean? It means I'm a piece of shit. Look deeper. I am. No, you're not. Look deeper. Ali, that sounds like a tagline for a dumb fucking movie. So just because it doesn't sound cool enough to you, you're going to settle for being superficial? That's unforgivable. Look deeper. What's it mean? That I'm violent to someone I love. Okay, okay. Why? Because that's who I am. I don't know what that means. It means I'm okay with that. That's what it says. But uh, are you okay with that? No. So it's not who you are? Yeah, well, I still did it. But why are you not okay with it? Because it's a terrible fucking thing to do. Why? Because it's shitty, it's cruel, and it's mean, and my mom doesn't deserve that. Those are all things you believe? Yes. And your beliefs are part of who you are? Yes, of course. So what you're saying is that you can simultaneously do something that you also believe is wrong. Well, doesn't you doing it mean more than your intentions? It all depends why you're ignoring all the things you believe. The sentence you've given yourself is that you, Rue Bennett, are beyond forgiveness. That punishment is way too harsh and it's also way too easy. It allows you to keep doing exactly what you're doing without changing because you deserve it. There's no hope. You're beyond forgiveness. So you may as well just fuck the fuck off forever and go die in the gutter because that's what this girl, this piece of shit deserves. This is why the world keeps getting worse. People keep doing shit that we deem unforgivable and in return they decide there's no reason to change. So now you got a whole bunch of people running around who don't give a fuck about redemption. That's scary. Oh, damn, that was uh, amazing. Such a great episode, and I watched this right when it uh, aired in December of 2020, but I just remember watching the episode and tears in my eyes, and I've revisited this, this show, this episode, many, many times since then. When I'm watching TV and f- feeling the need for the, the message of recovery, when I'm feeling low um, or when I'm feeling triggered, I pop this on and it turns my head around. So anyway, I wanted to share this with, um, with you guys. Uh, I've talked about it at a couple of meetings. I I hope you get something out of it um, in 
If you want to watch it, I'll leave the links to the YouTube page. And I believe that my commentary on these clips falls within the um, fair use of copyrighted material that educational purposes and short clips. I've looked into this in depth, and I believe that this falls under that. So if you have opinions, um, whether or not I should be sharing things like this on the podcast, uh, please let me know. In a few weeks, I am planning to have a conversation with one of my sponsees. Uh, he and I definitely bonded over the uh, TV show Lost. And uh, next week is the anniversary of the series finale of Lost. And so we'll be recording this actually a week after that anniversary. But um, yeah, he and I wanted to uh, discuss our relationship to that show and talk about other things in uh, program and stuff. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, I have a bunch of other topics and uh, group discussions and individual interviews that are coming up. But uh, with my hectic work schedule and uh, life throwing some curveballs here and there, it's been busy and I'm hoping to uh, be able to schedule those things in the coming weeks. Speaking of the coming weeks, we've got the International Convention coming up May 29th and 30th, which I am really, really looking forward to. So I'll be spending time uh, with that. And in addition to that, we are also launching a website for the podcast. I had mentioned in the episode uh, about progress, not perfection, that one of the things that was holding me back from launching the podcast uh, a year ago was not having a website to coincide with the launch of the podcast. And I decided to go ahead and start airing the episodes before the, the website was ready. But uh, we're making progress on getting the website finished, and I actually have a, um, a coming soon page on sexaddictsrecoverypod.com. And right now, currently, there's uh, a message there and a list of links of different places to listen to the podcast. So anyway, I will be making an, an announcement uh, shortly about the website. So with that, I'm going to close out this week. Um, I hope you got something out of it. It's something a little bit different than what I've done in the past. I hope you enjoyed it. And I thank you again for tuning in and keep coming back. The views and opinions contained in the Sex Addicts Recovery Podcast are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect those of the Bay Area Intergroup or the ISO of SAA. 